Well, hey there, and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop. If you are one of the unfortunate few that have a 2023 or newer Chevy, well, at least Silverados, I don't know about the other cars, but you may have noticed that GM discontinued the 12 volt power socket, you know, commonly referred to as the cigarette lighter adapter. They simply don't exist anymore. They only have USB type A and type C. There is no more cigarette lighter plug. Luckily, I've done some scouring and I've done my homework. I found a way around that and we're gonna add it in this old boy right here. So if you're interested to see how that works, stick around, let's do it. Well, first things first here, we may as well go over the parts list. Obviously, since this stuff doesn't exist, oh, well, this particular one is a 24 Silverado, but since they didn't make it with them, you can't get a 12 volt outlet for a 24 Silverado. So I've done some digging and luckily stuff is backwards compatible. Compatible to a point because we're adding this to like it's missing wiring and it's missing the hole in the dash. So yeah, bear in mind, we're gonna have to blast a hole in the dashboard. So. If you're not comfortable with that, yeah. Either way, we have a factory 12 volt outlet from a 21 Silverado, the factory beauty bezel thing. This is the part that you're gonna see sticking out of the dashboard. A little bit of homemade wiring here with a fuse because we're gonna to have to tap into the fuse block underneath the dashboard. And this is an adapter. This would be used for older vehicles, and older I mean like 21 something, that you could tap into the back of the cigarette lighter and steal power from it to do accessory stuff. But I'm gonna use this because this has the factory male plug that goes right into the back of here. Not to mention, now we have an extra plug hanging out if we wanna do something later in the future. But don't fret, I will link everything down in the description, all the parts, all the part numbers, and all the tools that you're gonna to need to do this job. Only thing left is to get in there and start ripping panels apart. Let's do it. So guys, since this is a relatively new thing, I mean, it's a 24, and at the time of this video, the calendar year isn't even 24 yet. So if you run into this issue, chances are, it's like me, you haven't been able to find any information on doing this. Hopefully this walks you through that. This panel that I just removed, this gives you access to the fuse block on the driver's side. Now, there is a lot of empty spaces in this fuse block because they use these for multiple vehicles. Luckily for us, there is a giant bus running down through the middle of it that's hot 12 volts. We can tap into that and use that for our accessory outlet. Don't worry, I'll bring you in and show you guys all this when we get to that point, but right now we just need to take the panels off. So if you guys are like me and you have these aftermarket floor liners, they're gonna have to go because they're covering the bottom of this center part that we need to take off. Now we're gonna hop in here with a seven millimeter here. Remove a screw, and that allows us to keep peeling panels. We need to remove those little beauty covers out of the bottom kick panel there, because that screw is coming out, and the same thing on the other side. Hi. So it turns out there's only a screw on the driver's side, nothing on the passenger, and then this thing just yanks out of the way. And that'll give us room to get to the bottom of this kick panel, and that's where the meat and potatoes of this job is happening. Do some yanking. This thing will come right out of here. All right, up here on the passenger side, right next to your USB ports, there is a stupid, stubborn little screw here for whatever reason, way up in here that's holding this whole thing. So I just unclipped this bottom bezel underneath the radio there, just enough to get my ratchet in there. There we go, that releases that whole thing. And we can put that back in whenever we're done. But at least now that this thing is out, we can go and drill it out there and keep the crap out of the inside of your truck. And this will give us a better idea of where is a good place to put this socket. So like we can kind of eyeball where everything is and look at the room behind it. I mean, as far as I'm thinking, I'm going right in the center, right underneath 
the fan control, like the on off button for your climate control. I'm gonna go right under there because there is a good empty spot. Let me bring in here so you can see better what I'm looking at. So here's what we got going on. There's the fuse box that we're tapping into. And see these four here? Those are 12 volt hot. That's what we're gonna be using. I'll grab the meter and show you later. We take off this side kick panel, real easy to do. That one just pops off to give you access to the fuse panel. This panel right here that you saw me take off takes one seven mil screw right there. This one comes off. Then we have to do the bottom piece here and then this top piece that goes all the way up to the bottom of the climate control. Now see this hole right here? I'm thinking that is a perfect spot where we're gonna put that plug and then we can run the wires back through the dashboard into the fuse panel. Now the next thing we have to do is cross our fingers and actually drill a hole in that panel. So this is basically what it's gonna look like behind the dashboard. I'm just gonna measure everything real quick make sure that we have enough spot behind there like I said, this is the only thing that you're going to see from the front. It's a factory GM plug, so it'll look like it's supposed to be there. And so this is about how much is sticking behind the plastic of the dashboard. We got, give or take, three inches. Allow a little bit of room for the bend of the wire. But at least with this, we have the factory plug. It's really nice and tidy. And like I mentioned, we're going to have an auxiliary plug here. But for the time being, I'm probably just going to wrap this up with tape. So we'll go ahead here. Kind of eyeball our fitment, see where we want everything. And honestly, I think this is going to work out just about bloody perfect. That's going to go right about there, real easy to get to. I'll tell you what, let me grab a marker, put a little dot on there so I don't have to guess whenever we get over to the bench. Now we also need to pay mind to our cover that goes on the outside make sure that where we drill this hole isn't too close to the edge, meaning it's gonna cover something or be in the way. Now, I think this is gonna work out just fine. Maybe I got my dot right there. That's right in line underneath the on off button for the climate control. And there's plenty enough room from the top. There's nothing going on back here. And this is what it's going to look like whenever it's all put together. Well, guys, we're finally to the point. This is the nerve wracking portion of the video. Like I said, if you're not comfortable with doing this, please don't. I mean, consult somebody, do whatever you'd like. I've done a ton of measuring and a ton of research. The back of this thing, the beauty cap that goes in here, is just a smidge. I mean, we're talking like 20 thou, bigger than one inch. So, we've got a one inch hole saw. So, hopefully, even with the chatter of a hole saw, we should still be a little, like, it should be snug going in there is what I'm saying. Either way, we're going to take our pilot, and then I'm going to cut the hole in reverse. If you guys have ever used a hole saw, you know those things like to grab and bounce and it gets violent if you can't control the cut. So if you go in reverse, it just kind of like mushes the hole out more so than cut it. But I mean, we're dealing with eighth inch thick plastic here. It shouldn't be a big deal, but we're gonna do it. So guys, I got my work piece set up here on a bench vise. Just open it up to allow room for the bit. Like I said, drill in reverse. Put it on our spot there. Okay, we can start the pre-drilling forward, but still, pay mind. All right, now that that's through, I'm switching to reverse. Even though it's spinning backwards, you still cut a hole. We'll go ahead and deburr that a little bit, clean everything up, and then check the fitment. Cool. Now that that's in there, here is the moment of truth. Shoving the beauty cover through the hole. 
Now, bear in mind, there is an orientation here. Well, I guess it's totally up to you. But factory GM, the, the little lid flips up. So that's the way we're going to go. Well, guys, my measurements are almost spot on. But luckily, the hole is too small, not too big. So since uh, the next step up hole saw I have is going to be definitely way too big, I'm just going to put a, uh, like a carbide burr on an angle grinder, and then we'll get in there and uh, size this up. Not to mention, if you guys look on the back of this thing, there is like an indexing notch. See on the very top there, there's a little square piece. We're going to have to cut that into the panel also so this thing doesn't spin once it's installed. <laughs> Now I've found with carbides, if you guys have done this before, it's much easier to go with the rotation of it rather than fight it because that's when it starts jumping around and bouncing on you. So I'm going to go right until this thing starts to fit and then we'll deal with that little notch on the top. Alrighty guys, so I got this thing to where I want it. It is just small enough to not allow that to go through without taking care of that notch on the top. So I'm going to take me a file. Just work the top of that until we have a good enough spot for that thing. Now keep in mind, this is the up and down indexing. So take your time with this and make sure it's vertical. Well guys, I know it's not pretty, but that is what we're left with. You see that little notch I put at the top there? That's for that indexing notch on the plug itself. Now, once we clean this thing up, make sure we have it all the right way. Slam it in. Look at that. I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty happy with that. That looks like it's supposed to be there. That's freaking awesome. Now we can insert the socket into the cover here, and it's got a notch. It only goes in one way. Push that thing in there and go until it clicks. You get that satisfying little click. And that locks this whole thing together. Like it presses out on the tabs that hold this thing into here. And it just works out really well. But now we have as factory looking as a 12 volt outlet that you could get. Now the moment of truth that our, our measuring did right. Let's uh, go put this back and test fit it underneath the dash. Make sure that thing fell in the hole that I wanted it to. Here goes nothing. Put this back up in location here. Look at that like a bloody glove. That couldn't be any better. I'm super happy about this. Now that the heart attack portion of this is over, let's just run some wire. So as far as wiring goes, this couldn't be any more simple. If you guys know anything about 12 volt systems, you have 12 volt power and ground. That's all there is to it. I got myself some 12 gauge uh, paired wire here. It doesn't have to be 12, but honestly, the bigger wire, the better. I mean, it can't freaking hurt. I have a 90 degree spade connector here that this is what's going to tap into that bus bar in the fuse box accompanied with a fuse holder. I would recommend not going anything over 5 amp. I mean, yes, this wire will handle that, but the socket itself and not to mention this wiring harness, this is significantly smaller. But either way, I'm using this for a camera system for my RV, so like it's maybe an amp and a half, maybe, and even that's pushing it. Either way, I just want this thing to work, and I don't want to have to worry about it. So you guys see, here on this end, I have my power with a fuse, and this side, I just have a lug. So we're going to ground it somewhere to something metal underneath the dashboard. Super simple. On this side, I just have some female spade connectors, because I am going to crimp some male spade connectors onto this thing, then we can put this together also. So that way I have multiple plug locations in this thing. So like if I have to take that panel back out of the dashboard or if I have to remove this wire, it's not a bad idea to have more connections is what I'm getting at. So we'll head on over here to our electrical consumable drawer. Grab us some male spade connectors. Get to crimping. So this one I already have done up because I had time the other day while I was still ordering parts. These ones here, I'm just going to lop off the connectors that it come with. Strip back about three quarters of an inch or so. Twist our strands. Now bear in mind, 
Just because I'm doing it this way does not mean that you have to. But hey, it's a free country. You do you. Crimp these guys on here good and tight. <laughs> good and tight. And there's our ground. All right. Now these are all set, and then this is what's going to go together here. But let's go ahead and take the meter over to the fuse box, and we'll start at that end and work our way over. All right, so hopefully you guys can see the screen on the meter from where you're at. I'm simply touching that exposed bus that I showed you earlier, and then a screw head here underneath the dashboard. We got 12 volts. Now bear in mind, by doing this, this is not a switched relay or anything like that meaning that it's going to have 12 volts all of the time it doesn't matter if the vehicle's running or if the key's in it or whatever it's always 12 volts so if you leave something plugged into that and forget about it it will stay on and drain your battery while the car is not running now this is stuff that comes with doing aftermarket stuff it's i mean yeah especially with these newer vehicles with this push to start and key fobs and everything it's not like working on a 95 Silverado where you put a fuse in and a relay and a switch and make it work. Like You can, but honestly, with these crazy ignitions and infotainment systems and everything, those days are long gone. But luckily enough, we have an access to 12-volt power here underneath the dashboard. And this is why I stressed putting our own fuse in here because we are tapping off of an unfused source. So we're going to do our own wire protection. And anytime you add anything electrical in a vehicle, it's a good idea to have some kind of limiting source, be it a fuse, a breaker, or whatever. But now that we have that taken care of, and I know that I have a decent ground here with this screw, we'll put our wire behind that, and we can run everything over to where we're going in the middle. Okay, guys, I'm sorry for you staring at my butt for most of this, but I'll bring you in here and show you the route that I took for wiring. We're going to have to clean it up a little bit for zip ties, and then I'm going to hide my extra here in the kick panel so you won't see anything but it's always better to have too much than not enough. So here in the fuse panel, I went out right in the same hole where all the other wires go. Over top of the DLC, and then there's some brackets here that hold this lower plastic underneath the steering wheel. This is where we're gonna zip tie up to make sure everything's safe and away from our feet. Up behind this plastic here, through this hole, and then eventually out the hole where the back of the plug is going to go. Now we can put the connectors together and actually pull, put everything together. Now, like I mentioned, I taped up this other side because, I mean, it's going to be a live plug. Yes, it's, it's okay. I don't think there's going to be an issue, but why not take the time to do it now? This is the plug that we need for the back of the factory 12-volt uh, outlet, and then this is the one that's going to go in the harness that we made. wiring up out of the way cool this is going to work great now don't forget about that little screw on the passenger side for this bottom kick panel because if you don't do it now you're never going to get it so let's get over there and do that now before i forget about it wow that is without a doubt the most difficult part of this entire process i don't care who you are but uh I'll bring you in one last time here to show you what I got going in here before this panel goes on for good. So here we have our wiring going up over the footwell. Coming out of this hole right here. That stupid screw up there that's miserable to get to. Here's that extra plug just tucked away behind the plastic panel. And then the back of the plug that we put in goes right in there in that hole. It's perfect. Now, we can put everything back together, and I'll show you what it looks like then. Cool. Now, we can throw this bottom one on here and uh, get that put back in. Alrighty, now's the point where we got to start doing some cable management. I'm just going to get up here with some zip ties, and there's some really nice metal brackets up here to keep everything good and tidy. So here I'm just removing that screw that I'm going to use for the ground point.
I'm going to run this up behind the plastics also, because even though I'm not going to see it, I want to know that it's done right. Tighten this puppy down. Don't worry, I'll show you guys all this. All right, guys, time for final wiring show and tell here before I put the kick panel on and we wrap this thing up. So I took that 90 degree female spade connector here, connected it on one of these free male plugs here. I tucked my fuse holder in there. I have a three amp fuse in there. All of the extra wire I coiled up here in the kick panel and everything else is run underneath real neat. You see here, we go up over top of this bracket. I have a zip tie on the feet vent here, zip tied up on the wiring harness there, and then it goes up into the dash out to our outlet. So guys, we are finally all wrapped up. Let me bring you in here and give you a driver's seat POV of how everything is. So check that out there, pony boy. Yes, okay, it may not look like it belongs there, but this is as factory as we could possibly get for what we're dealing with. And in case you guys are wondering why I needed this thing so bad, this is the camera setup for my RV. So let's just go ahead and make sure everything works, shall we? Look at that. We got 12 volt accessory power. Now we can actually plug in our old accessories. Just because we have a new truck with USB ports, we can still use this stuff. And I love that it looks factory. So guys, go on and grab yourself a cold drink because you did a good job. Now, like I said, pay mind to this because it's not a keyed outlet. If you leave something plugged into that and go in the house for the night or park the car for the weekend or like leave it at the airport or something, whatever's in there will drain the battery in your vehicle dead, dead. Like you're calling AAA dead. But hey, just in case you do forget and leave something plugged into there, if you don't have the AAA option, and let's be honest, if you're doing this kind of stuff, you're that prepared kind of person. Check this out. Live in the 21st century, guy. Get yourself one of these lithium-ion battery jump packs. These things are freaking awesome. This little beauty is the M6 lithium-ion jump starter from Most Tool. Not only is it a jump starter, but it has DC outlets on this side. Two USB type A's, a USB type C, and a regular DC output. Not to mention, we even have a light on this side, just in case you get stranded in the dark. Just saying guys, there's not a lot of things in this world that we can control, but you can keep yourself from having a dead battery. So just like everything else in this video, I'll throw a link for this thing down in the description so you can keep one in your vehicle. But you guys saw what that was. It really wasn't difficult. You just need to get over that mental thing of drilling a hole through the dashboard of your new truck. Add a little bit of wiring, add a little bit of crimping, a little bit of solder, and however you decide to put it together. Be sure to put that fuse in line. God forbid something happens or your whatever your accessory plugged into it shorts out or something in the dashboard like it rubs a wire through and shorts out. You need to have that fusible protection so that short doesn't go back into your factory fuse panel. And you guys saw me struggle with that one screw on the bottom thing. I, yeah, I don't know what the heck that was all about, but I mean, hey, we got it out and we got it in. We didn't break anything. No clips, no panels. Everything went right back, snapped back in the way that it was supposed to. Super good. So if you guys are like me and you got one of these newer Chevys and you are just through the roof mad that there is no 12-volt cigarette lighter outlet, we got a way around that. Brought to you by Dan's Pro Shop. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little uh, tutorial. And this gives you enough ambition to get this job done for yourself. So guys, if you feel like tackling this for yourself so you can have that outlet at your disposal, check out all the links in the description for everything you need to do this project. Hopefully you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.